Hello again, it's Lot Noob, and today we get to look at this Multipick Elite Medium Pick set, 27 pieces not included in the case, and this is another collaboration between Multipick and Christina Palmer. I've already done a review of the beginner Elite Christina Palmer Multipick Pick set, and uh, possibly, depending on when you watch this, I might have already done a review of the large um, Multipick Elite Christina Palmer Multipick Pick set. Huh, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, before I carry on, um, this kit was kindly sent to me by Multipick for a review. It's worth mentioning that I have worked with Multipick on a few projects myself, though I don't profit from any sales of any Multipick product. Um, all views are my own, uh, so let's get going. So where do we start with a review? Uh, normally I just go through what's in the kit first of all, then we might do a bit of a demonstration, then we do some conclusions. Um, where do we start? Well, I'm gonna start a bit backwards and I'm gonna start with the tension tools. So you might have seen these tension tools here. And these are all what we might call uh, pin side or uh, top of the keyway tools. Uh, some of which you'll be familiar with. These are turning tools, tension tools. Uh, and you see they're in different thicknesses, 0.8, 1, and slightly unusually, a 1.3 millimeter. Um, why is that good? Well, that extra thickness, normally these are 1.2 millimeters, are quite good when it comes to, I've got a bit of a kick cylinder here, fitting in the top of, of kick cylinders. They tend, to, it just tends to fit in nicely and be a bit tighter. You can probably see that fit. Pretty good, isn't it? Um, so that 1.3 as opposed to 1.2 makes actually a reasonable amount of difference. Um, then we also have some longer ones. You might think, why do we need them that long? Well, there's a lot of locks, and this might not be a very good example, but it's one I had to hand, which have big old escutcheons and spinners and everything. And you know, it's actually quite a, a long way before you get into um, the lock. And one of these little ones, look, won't actually uh, go in with these bigger scutcheons. Obviously, it's great if you can get them closer to the lock because um, there's sort of less wobble, it's a bit more secure. But if you don't have that option, then of course you might want to get in with something a bit longer. And would you look at that? Um, it, this reaches all the way down to the top of that keyway. There you go, got tension. So those are some uh, pretty cool. There you go, look at that. Again, those three thicknesses, you can see that on the edge um, for the top of the keyway tools, pretty nice. Then um, this was in the beginner set as well. And I really like these, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> I, th I thought these were one of the best parts of the kit. And uh, what are they? Well, they're the, sort of the same. You see here it says, uh, designed by Christina Palmer on there, which I, I think is a really nice multi pick to do. And these are bottom of the keyway or away from the pins. Um, and these again are in, might not be in order, but you can see 0.8 millimeters, one millimeter, and 1.3 millimeters. Uh, two different lengths for the uh, same reason that these are bottom of the keyway and these are top of the keyway. Um, so your top of the keyway tools might go in here like that. And your, or did I say top of the keyway, bottom of the keyway? Got myself confused. Those are the top of the keyway and then the bottom of the keyway are here. I suppose it depends on which way up your lock is orientated, but you can see that you've got, um, again, different thicknesses to get yourself a, um, a tight fit. For example, this 1.3 is a little bit too thick, so maybe I'll try the one, and yep, I've got a really tight fit here. The last tension tool which comes in this kit, and isn't it nice we get actually quite this amount of choice of tension tools, um, is this interesting tool here. You might be able to see what it is and why it's like that. Yep, this is a tapered tension tool. So this would mean, for example, the tip might fit into this lock, or you might slide it down a bit further and get a tighter fit. Obviously you don't push it in too far because you'll splay the lock apart, um, although you'd need to be pretty firm to do that on a lot of locks. Um, but yeah, this this will just slide in and, uh, uh, and in a lot of locks will just provide a really tight amount of tension at the bottom so you don't get a, a, a tension slip and you get really good control over the core when you're picking. Very cool. So it is tapered and it allows you to find 
obviously a good fit. I'll just grab another lock um, over here and show you. I'm choosing these wide open keyways so it's a bit more obvious what's going on. Um, and again, that can go in and provide good tension. Uh, let's try and find a bit of a tighter keyway, a, a Euro style lock. Uh, lock that back up and again you can see that that will go in quite deep before um, you get a tight fit but a tight fit you do get but yeah as i said um, there's something else about this tension tool which you may have noticed and that's that it's at an angle there we go um i don't know exactly what that is about 40 degrees maybe I might be wrong um why well again it gives you some extra options when you don't have great clearance. Again, here's um, just one example of a lock with a spinner and a scutcheon. Um, actually forms part of the door pull mechanism as well. Uh, and it, this will go in and it will allow you to have clearance here while getting you very close and tight in with the lock. So I think you can see here how useful that could actually be. Um, the whole lock's turning the back. <laughs> I don't think it's screwed in very well. It's supposed to be actually attached to uh, the door clearly, but anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, really, really cool and a nice thing to have as an option for a tension tool. I've not used it an awful lot, but when I have used this tool in sort of my testing, um, I, yeah, pretty good actually. I think I need more time with this. Uh, these, these are, um, you know, apart from the, uh, the different thicknesses, these tools are, are relatively uh, regular, I'd say, but, but this one in particular, is, is really unique to this set. I've not seen anything like this in any other set at all. And um, yeah, I'm really interested in using this longer term, seeing if you know this this becomes one of my favorites. It could well do actually. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting. And the, at its thickest, it, it goes from 0.8 to 1.4 millimeters. Just so cool. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, it's one of those unique things which it's so sort of new to me. I haven't formed a, 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 a firm opinion on it yet, but I reckon it's got some really good potential. I'm very excited, like I said, to keep using it over time, seeing how I get on with it. Right, now you'll also notice over here, if you've got keen eyes, um, yeah, you've got some rakes, but over, over, uh, but you'll notice they seem to be duplicated. You've got duplicate profiles. And yeah, that's because you get dual thicknesses. So um, I believe these are the same profiles that you get in the beginner set, but not only do you get the naught points, let's have a look down here, the 0.6 millimeter picks, um, but you also get a set of 0.4. And just in case you um, weren't sure which one was which, one has these nice uh, pick profile etchings on the bottom. The other one just says 0.4. So really clear that these are much thinner. And if you actually um, line them up so you can see that they are markedly thinner. Um, so yeah, this, this is 0.4 six millimeters or around 23 thousandths and uh, 0.4 is around 15 or 16 thousandths of an inch. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, these are the same profiles that you get in the beginner set. You just get uh, a, a dual profile set, um, a smaller set. And it's, a, it's yeah, it's pretty cool actually. Um, obviously the thinner the, the pick, the more tight the keyways you can get into. Um, but the thicker the pick, the better um, stiffness you get and the better feedback. So most people would tend to use the thickest pick they could in a lock, um, uh, unless they couldn't maneuver it, and uh, then they would use a thinner pick. That's generally the way people go about it. So what pick profiles do we get? Well, we get seven profiles of picks and rakes from each size. And um, let's have a look at them quickly uh, in turn. So this is a, a curve or spoon or reach pick. And I think I said in my beginner set, this just isn't my preference. Um, it's not a profile which I use very often. I'd definitely use this as a probe more than I would a pick. Uh, Christina Palmer uh, did say that lots of beginners find this more intuitive um, than a short hook, something like this, um, when they're starting out um, learning lock picking from her experience. So definitely your mileage may vary, um, but we're all allowed preferences, aren't we? And this is mine. Um, but th that being said, let's just, before we get on to um, the rest of the picks look at the general finish and quality of multi-pick stuff and you can see here that the finish is just superb all the attention to details here the sandwiched um, steel handles I think they're all made out of a um, uh, a hardened spring steel which a multi-pick are famous for you can see all the cool etching on here from the part number through to uh, the individual um, serial number the year it's made uh, uh, all the kind of uh, logos and everything on it 
um, anybody who's used multi-pick tools will, will know, um, you know, the sort of quality and attention to detail that they're getting. Anyway, so that's the spoon profile. Let's move on now to the original hybrid pick, the half diamond, and this is a very nice one. You can pick with it, you can scrub with it, you can even use it as a dimple pick if you must. Um, a classic profile which has a lot of love in the community. Then we've got some hooks, um, and again, I think that all uh, kits, big or small, should have at least the, these types of profile, which is going to be a short hook, a medium hook, and, and a deeper hook. The deeper hook has this sort of, can you just make it out here? Sort of a scallop shape here. Um, which means that you've got a lot more pin clearance and a more precision tip for setting uh, hard to reach uh, deep pins. Very cool. Uh, I think I mentioned it last time that it's an interesting choice that the short hook is um, flat rather than round. My preference is round, but I can equally use these flat profiles too. And they do have, I believe, mechanical advantage where they're able to grip the uh, tips of pins a little easier. And a lot of people really, really love these flat tips. Um, again, I can use them, I like them. Um, it's not my go-to, uh, but but they're good. And then you've got a quad and quint cycloid, I think it's cycloid, um, rakes. And these are, well, I've used them a lot before and, um, and uh, in, in various guises. And I have to say, like a lot of these um, worm style uh, peats rakes, they're just really effective if you get the right lock, really are. Then, of course, we have all of the profiles, like I said, repeated. Again, yeah, much thinner. Instead of, like I said, 0.6, you get 0.4 millimeters, but you still get um, all the profiles and, and all the sort of finish and quality that you would expect again. So, uh, let's just do a comparison between two short hooks while we're here and to see if there's any um, differences. And you can see that the 0.4, which is at the bottom, makes up for the thinness of the width at this side um, with a shank height this way uh, to make up for the, the that, that thinness. So, um, you know, if you removed, if you just removed the, the thickness on, at this side here, um, I guess it'd be the Z axis, um, and didn't change the y-axis, then you would definitely uh, introduce more weakness than, than, than necessary, I think, in terms of your pick. So this extra extra little bit of uh, shank height on the y-axis uh, certainly helps stiffen these picks up when you're using them, but still gives you that flexibility um, that you expect from a 0.4 millimeter pick. Very cool. Right, so that's all of the uh, the pick profiles. That's the turning tool profiles. Let's. I'm, I'm not going to get through all of them clearly, but um, I'm going to try out a few of these profiles on a few locks. A bit of a demo. It's always good fun, and um, then we'll come back to some conclusions. We have a little Abus 6040 here. Cute little lock. I'm just going to use the short hook on this. Going through. And there we go. Here we are with a, a quint cycloid and just go in and see what we can do with this, uh, this little lock. And there we go, straight away opened. And I've got a nice tight uh, fit with this 0.8 millimeter tension tool. A bit of classic half diamond picking on this little Yale lock. into a bit of a false set. And we're open. I don't think I demoed this profile in the last review, so let's do this now. Um, this is this Masslock um, Excel or, or Magnum, and just making sure I've picked all those pins right, and there we go. And finally, just to mix things up, I've got a six pin Euro with security pins in, and a 0.4 mil quad rake with the tapered offset tensioner uh, so get me that really nice uh, 
tension at the bottom of the lock. Very light tension and put in the thing and ah, straight away into a bit of a full set. So uh, let's grab another pick. Let's grab a, um, a medium hook and just see what needs to be set. And I think it could be this pin number one. Often is and we are open. And that was just a 0.4 millimeter medium hook there. Before we get into any conclusions, uh, let's just appreciate the case actually. This is all leather um, and you can just see how beautiful and smooth the, the grain of the leather is, not to tip all the picks out, but I'll show you the back as well. Um, it really is a wonderful tactile, lovely thing. Um, and it's got this uh, sort of velvety interior as well, which really shows off the, the picks, um, although it's a, a nightmare to keep all the little specks of dust um, off it on camera underneath this intense lighting, but that shouldn't affect you in any way. So um, yeah, I mean, it's a really, really, really uh, lovely case as well. Now, as you can see, these are premium picks made from premium materials, um, uh, and they come with a premium price. This isn't a, a, a super cheap set, but I think it's one that when you break it down to its individual components, it's a pretty good value for the quality you're getting. Uh, at the time of shooting this video, and it may change over time depending on uh, when you watch it and, and stuff, so obviously go check out the Multipit website for the latest prices. Uh, this is about €159.90, £146.20, or $186 uh, US dollars and um, uh, 11 cents. Um, so, all, all thereabouts, as I said. So, you know, you, you do get a lot for that money, but that isn't an insignificant amount of money. Um, but that's the same with any sort of premium product. Uh, you know, you, there are cheaper alternatives, but if you are looking for a premium kit, then this is a, a, a reasonable choice for you, I think. Um, what do I think of it? Uh, well, I think it's really, really good. I have to say, I think it's really well thought out. Uh, the thing which sells it to me the most are these tension tools, I think. Um, you know, there are kits out there with similar uh, tension tools, but just the attention to detail with the sort of uh, thicknesses and lengths and offsets and, and all those kind of things, it just is nice. It really works out for me. Um, I, I like them an awful lot. In terms of the profiles, you get a really good mix. Again, we all have our preferences. There will be people out there who don't like um, half diamonds in particular um, and, and would prefer to have, I don't know, a, a triple peak rake. Um, there are people that uh, absolutely love reach picks but never use a, a deep hook. Um, so we can't really go on about whether I think that, you know, this is like my perfect mix of picks. Um, I would probably swap out, for example, the uh, reach spoon pick thing for um, another hook maybe. But again, that's my personal preference. So I think that this actually is a cohesive set of uh, picks and rakes. Yeah, actually, I, I do. This is going to get you into an awful lot of stuff. Between, um, you know, the shallow profiles of the spoon and the short hook, uh, these deeper uh, hook profiles, the half diamond and some rakes, uh, you're, you're, especially with the double thicknesses here as well, those um, the 0.6 and 0.4, uh, you're going to be getting to an awful lot of locks and, and even an awful lot of pretty high security locks as well with those thinner profiles uh, wiggling through those really tight keyways. Uh, and combined with the, a really, really strong selection of tension tools, um, yeah, I think for a, uh, a medium uh, size set, uh, this, this offers some really solid options for, for pickers. Uh, yeah, anyway, I mean, that's just my opinion. I'd really be interested in yours. Uh, so drop a comment below with your experience with, uh, you know, uh, multi-pick tools. What do you think to this set? Have you bought uh, uh, one of these Christina Palmer multi-pick sets? What do you think of it? Let us know uh, below in the comments. It's always good to hear from other people and their views too. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Uh, thank you to multi-pick to uh, for sending me this set and I'll see you all next time.